All right, praise be to God. Joining us right now via Zoom chat is uh, Jenna Christakis Durham. She is with Children of the Immaculate Heart, which serves survivors of sex trafficking and opens the door to their restoration in Jesus Christ. Praise be to God. Good morning to you, Jenna. Good morning. Uh, we, you know, this is a topic that I am grateful we have an opportunity to talk about. I feel like it doesn't get talked about enough, the human sex slave trade being as uh, bad as, as it is in society. I feel like it doesn't get enough uh news coverage, right? So let's talk about this. The Children of the Immaculate Heart, tell us about this organization and what you do. Sure. So Children of the Immaculate Heart is a Catholic nonprofit. We have been around uh, since 2013. We actually just celebrated our um, eight-year anniversary Congratulations. earlier in October. Thank you. We had a fun little party. It was great. Uh, so we uh, offer help to uh, both minor girls so, who are victims of trafficking and then also adult women and adult women who have children. So we have two programs, our adult program, which is uh, the program I actually run. And then the minors program, which is uh, what we call an SRTP, a short term residential uh, program wow. for specifically minor girls who are survivors of trafficking, sex trafficking specifically. No, I understand you guys run a home where you, you actually give a place to live for these ladies and these children. That's correct. So housing is uh, services in both programs. The home that we own is specifically for the minors program. And we are able to house up to six minors at a time. And there are uh, licenses that allow you to do more than six girls. But uh, our founder, Grace Williams, really thought that it was best to keep the, the group small so there is more of connection between the employees and the girls. And we really want it to feel like a family-styled uh, type program. So six girls uh, at a time is our max. And we just opened uh, last September so it's um it's been over a year that we've been opened. It's oh, wow. been five years of five years plus of work trying to get it open. Uh, and, and you opened just, during the pandemic. So you opened during we the pandemic. We did. Boy, that was that must have been extra fun. I mean, <laughs> that, yes, extra extra fun. Actually, and, so. and the house <laughs> is located in California. That's correct. Yeah. Jenna, we tell, can't give out like specifics. But. Jenna, um, tell us a little bit about the culture of the home. Um, how do you, um, I, from, from my conversations with Grace in the past, I know she talked about creating kind of like a monastic, kind of like a monastery type of vibe where um, there's like mass being offered. And I, from my understanding, you guys have an uh, in-house like uh, chapel and like uh, there's like a prayer um kind of like uh, prayer prayer kind of governs like the uh, the day um, so like morning prayer and evening prayer is that is that something that you guys do what is the culture like so in the home I've actually had um, the greatest honor to to work at the refuge while also running the adult program so I was a facility manager at the refuge for um, a good portion of the first few months or so that we opened and uh, we have a chapel there in the in the house and although you know we don't push our faith on anyone we are big um, believers in leading by example so a lot of our um, employees are catholic or christian and so throughout the day any employee any any volunteer any client can go in the chapel and join us in prayer. Um, we also can have mass in the chapel. We're working on being able to um, have Jesus uh, in the home wow. 24 seven. Um, that's in a work in progress. We need uh, approval from the, the bishop, so I believe. So we're figuring that out. But um, yeah, so that's kind of, the, the spiritual life there and um back in the main office we do staff rosary every time we're all together just for um all of our clients and donors and everything so mm. 
in addition to um, what we do jointly um, at the refuge, we're also being prayer is in the main office in San Diego. So I have an, another question, Jenna. Um, I know from uh, the history of Children of the Immaculate Heart that you guys received some pushback on uh, even like starting the foundation in specifically in California because um, you know, there's a lot of uh, religious freedom um, laws that are uh, kind of like backfiring, kind of the, um, the the start of the foundation. Can you tell us a little bit about the the um, the legal issues that you guys have confronted and how you have overcome them? Sure. Um, we can't. I can't go into um, too specific of details only because that's agreement that we have with the state but uh we were definitely running into issues um for like things such as um being forced to take um an underage girl to get an abortion or um you know it get it come to get concept conception um which of course is you know against our, our beliefs and so um, it, it was difficult. Um, well, I mean, we uh, obviously at the end figured it out, which is so great. Um, but we just, we had to um, kind of show how we're, we're going to work around that. And uh, there were some other issues as well. Um, uh, other, other things that kind of went against our faith. Like if um, a girl wanted to attend uh, Pride pride rally or um anything like that we weren't going to offer transportation because again like that's not something necessarily um nor the catholic uh, faith is aligned with you know same-sex marriage and, and and whatnot um i mean we accept any any girl to the refuge they are beloved loved so much regardless of anything because that's what we called to do uh, and so that we, we definitely would never um, be prejudiced in that mm. way. If, you know, a girl is thinking, you know, that they yeah. like other girls or anything like that, you know. We're talking with Jenna Christakis Durham, and she is with the Children of the Immaculate Heart. Uh, Jenna, how do you, how do the girls find you? How do you find the girls? For... The refuge, um, the minors program, because we do have state involvement, we'll get, we have to get contracts with uh, certain counties in order to take the girls. So we'll get um, county contracts. Sometimes there's private contracts um, with um, certain um, establishments. Uh, but that's just generally how we get uh, the girls, and they mainly come from the probation system. Oh, so these are girls that are ending up before a judge, and um, that's and then you're on a list of agencies that might be able to help out. Yes, but um, in order to receive, you know, these girls, you have to have a specific license. Mm -hmm. um, so there are actually only a handful of um, SDRP programs like ours in California. I think while we were um, fighting to get us licensed, there was only like one in existent maybe like really that two seems, that seems crazy uh, <laughs> and um i think uh the i think there was one one catholic um program that was similar to ours mm. um that's done in la though i think but yeah so it, it we are one of the few organizations that actually have this license and I'm sure there's much more, um, hopefully <laughs> at this point. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah. Tell me about the, uh, uh the adults program that uh, you run with the uh, children of the Immaculate Heart program. Uh, who are these women? What is their background and how are you helping them? Sure. So, um, and these women, <laughs> I love them so much. <laughs> uh, these women come from I mean, different areas of California. Um, I mean, we, of course, accept women outside of California. But right now we help seven adult women and there are 16 children. So essentially an adult program, there's 23 people that, that we're helping at this moment. Um, I mean, they come from 
different areas of, of life, um, different races, um, different classes of, of, of economic wealth. Um, we provide wraparound services for them and we, the case management that we do, it's very individualized to what the person specifically needs. And it's not like a general, uh, Ization of like services. Mm -hmm. So, you know, some people might need more financial services than another. We don't split everything evenly like that. And our main two uh, services that we provide is housing and um, therapeutic uh, services. So right now, each lady goes to um, therapy every week every week and we have group therapy and there's other therapy um uh, services that we'll be doing soon depending on funding mm. uh, and housing we have to outsource it since we don't own anything yet <laughs> uh, we help like we drive them to doctors appointments we uh, have case management meetings every week uh, we even help their children uh there's just unlimited amount of services that we offer sure. these ladies like even down to teaching them how to drive oh <laughs> really tell you. that must be fun uh, <laughs> i've yes. had to do that with, with my own kids so i know how that goes <laughs> parallel parking oh is always a, a headache but yeah. why do you, why do you call why do you name the program after saint paquita Oh, uh, so St. Nikita is the patron set, uh, saint of those uh, enslaved and so, um, I mean, sex trafficking is called mm -hmm. modern day slavery. And so, um, I mean, St. Bikita herself was taken away, was, was stolen uh, at a very young age from her family, from where she lived. And that, that was her life. She was a slave. Um, so that's, that's why uh, our, our CEO, Grace Williams, decided to name our adult program after St. Paquita. Mm. It's a powerful story. She was uh, obviously herself, uh, St. Paquita was molested uh, by her, mm -hmm. uh, by her quote owners. And, uh, but uh, by the grace of God, she was freed by an Italian court. And uh, we're very grateful for the, the life and the testimony of St. Paquita. Now, uh, how, so these women that come to these adult women, th these are women who were in the sex slave trade and then were rescued or how, well, like, what is their general background in that regard? No, well, they're all survivors of sex trafficking. So, um, and it's, <laughs> so their involvement and like how they became involved um, into that, in the industry is that it's very much different from uh the Taken movie, um, though that happens, you know, what happens in that movie, uh, it does occur, but these days it's more of coercion and manipulation. And, um, it's like a long-term manipulation, um, strategy. So okay. what typically happens, and this is the general story for, for all of our clients in the adult program, really, and, and um, the minors program, mm -hmm. is uh, the trafficker will specifically uh, target girls. Um, the traffickers are trained to be able to immediately uh, spot girls with insecurities or, or whatnot that makes them more vulnerable to um, manipulation and charm. And so what it is is called the boyfriend strategy so there'll be these older men and sometimes even um, high school aged pimps mm -hmm. that befriend certain girls that they know uh, have maybe a very poor family life or, uh, you know, again, very, uh, a lot of deep rooted insecurities. And they specifically go for a certain age group. So at the average age of entry is 16, but, you know, I, I've heard of girls as young as nine years old. And so this pimp will befriend um, the, the girl and uh, make her believe that he can make his her dreams come true. Oh, wow. And he slowly isolates her from her entire support system until she's completely reliant on him for everything. Love, confidence, self-worth, finances, everything. And then so slowly, like, uh, he'll um, 
eventually get her into um, selling herself for money. And it's mm. typically like the scenario of like, oh, babe, I can't pay rent this month. I don't know what to do. But, you know, my friend's girlfriend is doing is, th- is doing this on the streets. But, you know, I can never ask you to do that. And so planting seeds and making this person, this individual, believe that she's actually chosen this life. And then once she's in it, he keeps her in um, by getting the, her addicted to drugs mm. or threatening the lives of the people that she cares about most or saying, like, no one's ever going to want you after you've done this to yourself. Like, you're trash. I'm the only one who's ever going to want you. Like, things like that, if they try to leave. And and most, most ladies uh, and women or young children who do try to leave uh, well, it, it's, it doesn't turn out well. I've heard so many stories from adult clients of like, you know, I got really lucky uh, being able to get out of this life because all well, most of my friends end up sad in an alley. So it's it's so scary. Yeah. It's really scary, and it takes a lot of courage um, from these survivors to leave yeah. to escape. I can really. imagine it would. Uh, we're talking with Jenna Christakis Durham from the Children of the Immaculate Heart program. And by the way, their website is Children of the Immaculate Heart and I believe it's is it dot com or dot org. Children of the Immaculate org. Heart dot org. Org. Yeah. Um, I mm-hmm. encourage everyone to check that out and even consider maybe making a donation so that you can support this work. But Jenna, tell me about uh, the lasting uh, impact on these women and their children, the young girls also that you're serving, is it possible for them to come back to something that feels normal? They, um, their trauma will always be with them. It's not like going through a program or any program is never going to be some magic cure. I mean, even our senior clients and and whatnot, it's going to be with them forever. What we try to do is is help them live, live with it, to cope with it, to understand that they're beautifully made and loved and worthy of love, and to gain this um, sense of self worth and confidence that they've never had before through um, you know the love of Jesus Christ. So that um, you know that is kind of the goal and. I hope that answers your question. I'm not, I'm not sure if I quite answered so, your question. Uh, I, yeah, I'm just trying to envision what life must be like for, for these poor women and their oh, kids yes. and, these okay. young, yes. and these young people to understand, you know, the trauma has to be very deep and profound and whether or not they can go on to living something more of a normal life even after. Um, and I, as a Catholic, I have to believe the answer is found in the Holy Sacraments, the grace of God and healing um, but through this program, do you have any testimonies of, uh, of women who have rebounded and, 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 and moved on? Oh, oh yes. Um, and we have, yes, <laughs> we do. <laughs> um, there's this particular client. She's probably been, um, the one, uh, in our program the longest. And I have the, the honor of seeing her almost every day. She's so great. Uh, she, ah, sorry, um, it's a technical hey, malfunction. Now uh, your camera's horizontal. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? So great. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm so loud. I don't want to wake anyone up. That's okay. Um, <clears throat> sorry. I have an interesting setup. Um, it's fun. You'd be very, <laughs> yes, surprised. Um, so you were saying a testimony of a, of a lady in your program has been there the longest. Yes, yes, yes. Um, she she tells me almost every day that I see her how much she has changed. And she's, she tells me, like, I used to be so angry of a person. And I didn't realize why it was until I came to this program. And it was because of the abuse, because of, you know, just everything, um, all the trauma. Mm-hmm. And coming to our program, she says, I'm at peace. Like, I don't, I don't get angry. I'm more patient. I like, I look at life differently. Mm-hmm. I have a relationship with God that like, I never thought I would have. Yeah. Um, it's so interesting. Like she has so many struggles in life, not just financial, but 
she is one of our ladies who have have been or had been in the life the longest over 20 years wow and that doesn't only have an emotional and mental effect on you it has a physical effect on you uh she right now she and i are working hard towards accomplishing her physical health goals and i mean that that includes so many procedures like dental procedures Mm. actual surgeries on her body oh gosh and um so it's to answer your question of like how difficult it is i mean just just imagine um a ptsd it's 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 ptsd when you're a you're a survivor of sex trafficking i can imagine words trigger you um yeah people who like certain uh, people that you know trigger you there's this constant fear of running into your trafficker um, the lady that I, I've been speaking about, I mean, her trafficker, trafficker lives in, in San Diego, in central San Diego. Like, oh, really? Um, and she's seen him driving on, on the street like a few Ooh. times in the last four or five years. And that, that fear that comes up, like it makes her just stay home yeah. for like weeks at a time because she's so afraid. Like different things like that. Or um, if you if you don't know how to, to properly like talk with a survivor, you, you can definitely bring up a lot of their trauma. I can um, imagine. And because she's, she's come such a long way. I mean, she's not as um, sensitive as she used to be. <laughs> she first <laughs> came straight out of the life, straight out of the life into our program. Yeah. She was one of our first clients. But it's it's a struggle. You have all those memories, we, all those memories you can never get rid of, and then you're also trying to care of your kids because most of the leasing program are single moms mm-hmm. and providing for them and also nurturing your own, you know, mental health. And it's different than the typical self care of like the typical mom. We're talking with Jana Christakis Durham from the Children of the Immaculate Heart program. Again, you can find them over at Children of the Immaculate Heart dot org. Um, we only have a couple of minutes left. Uh, Jenna, tell us, what, what does it cost to run programs like this? Lots of money. <laughs> <laughs> you, um, can you give us a sense of the scale? Yes. Uh, so for the adult program, just for housing and one-on-one therapy and group therapy, it's like well, $150,000 a year. Oh, really? Um, and that doesn't even include... Um, the other services that we offer, like mm. transportation or groceries or education. Um, so it, huh. what about the medical so, expenses of your clients? Who, who covers that cost? Us too. We do that as well. Um, oh, wow. we have that in our budget for bigger, bigger surgeries or procedures that cost a little more than we can afford. We mm. are so blessed to have partners, uh, who with like women's groups or other foundations that will help us pay for those expenses. Like we have a lady in our program who's gone through several, several brain surgeries in the last two really? years. Oh, wow. Oh yeah. And, and partially, um, whatever injury she had, um, pre-existing, her life or her time and in, in the life mm. uh, made was made significantly worse because of how often she was beat by her trafficker. Oh, I'm so sorry. So that, so this, these surgeries are definitely um, a, a result from being in the life. And then there's a lot of them have the dental issues um, just for various reasons. Like while you're alive, you don't necessarily go to the doctor Sure, <laughs> or like sure. even the dentist yeah. and your diet isn't actually like the best. Or again, when you're being beaten up, like your teeth are going to be messed up. Oh, so is so our, our medical mm. um, services is super important. Um, right now for the adult program, I'm trying to raise, I think it was $66,000 by the end of the year to go towards housing and 
therapeutic services for so next that's year. A good goal. All... Well, let me encourage the audience to maybe consider making a donation and uh, and helping the program out. It would be a wonderful thing to do. Jenna Christakis uh, Durham has been our guest. Children of the Immaculate Heart is the program. You can find them over on their website, childrenoftheimmaculateheart.org, and there's even a donate button there. You can help maybe uh, alleviate this this need for this uh, this housing that helps these ladies. That would be wonderful. Jenna Christakis Durham, we're thankful for your time today. God bless you. God love you. Have a great day, and we'll be praying for your success and for the program and for all the women and children that are involved. If you like that interview, then be sure to check out some of our other interviews that you might find fascinating. And don't forget to like and subscribe and share this interview with someone that you think will find this informative and inspiring. God love you.